So President's Day came and went, and the moment everyone had been waiting for landed with a thud yeah. as former president, your favorite president, Donald Trump's <laughs> new illustrious social media app and Twitter killer, the ironically named Truth Social, was a complete failure at launch with what appears to be no actual access for people hungry for an exclusive Trump-filled social network or the uh, equal, if not greater, number of morbidly curious bystanders who are willing, uh, we just want to join that damn app yeah. <laughs> and uh, just want to drive ourselves insane out of... Uh, Pure curiosity. Masochism. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this new free speech platform, which is endorsed and monetized by the former president, uh, turns out, shocker, just like all the other Twitter killers, is actually far more restrictive than nearly every other social media site. So Can you be believe fun, it? It'll be fun to watch people eat each other alive. Yeah, so this is all without the added bonus of the app being a, a glaring target for hackers and federal agencies who almost certainly view it as a quick and easy way for people to willingly tell on themselves. It's a honey trap. And the honey is extra sticky. Yeah. Now, since I have an iPhone, it had to be me who tested out this hot new app. Not available on Android. Get out of here, green bubbles. <laughs> so I had to, I pre-ordered the app, which is just like it downloads it yeah. automatically when it becomes available. And to my surprise, they beat their expectations. They actually launched it uh, technically on Sunday night. Didn't even have to wait till President's Day. Oh, baby. So I was ready to dive right in and start seeing some truths. Yeah. But alas, as of a Tuesday when we filmed this, a full 48 hours after the app launched, I still can't even access anything. I can't even successfully create an account for that matter. Uh, and it's not just because they have some AI tracking who's creating accounts just to watch the chaos or troll other users. It's not like they're like, hey, wait a second. This guy's up to no good on our truth app. Yeah. Now this issue He's is- He's telling untruths. Yeah, it's, it's so widespread that I haven't been able to successfully verify any screenshots or any access to the app outside of the accounts that were specifically whitelisted for use, like Trump's own official account. And anything you see of that is just screenshots posted to Twitter. By because, his son. <laughs> yeah, by, because no one can get into the Truth yeah. Social app. Yeah. Uh, the furthest I was able to get is uh, getting a verification confirmation email that would let the app know that I actually wanted to continue creating the account that the uh, the email I gave them, though I did create it just for this account, was a real email address. So I entered that, got the verification email, clicked it. Obviously, that didn't work. So I was like, let me give it a day. It still doesn't work. Still doesn't work. Still doesn't work. But even clicking the link, like I said, it just gives me a screen with an error message. Now, I have seen screenshots of people getting past this point, but they're just given a number and added to a <laughs> queue. Uh, the Daily Beast was able to successfully join the queue. Uh, in, in their reporting, they stated the following. The waitlist numbers fluctuated throughout the night, with the Daily Beast reporter at one point sitting at 96,427th place in line on Monday morning. Other users reported queue positions as high as 160,000. Additionally, on Monday, a web status notice posted to Truth Social's website read, Due to the overwhelming demand at launch, we are currently rate limited on onboarding new users to the platform. We are working to increase sign-up capacity for onboarding and will continue to update this status as capacity increases. So it looks like truth will have to wait. And <laughs> it's not like people didn't see this coming. Uh, nearly every Trump-branded product over the past couple decades has been a worse version of something that already exists. And his social media app will be no exception, even when it is fully operational. Yeah. As, if, if it ever is. <laughs> as people have already pointed out, the very few preview images from the app show that it's essentially identical to Twitter, both visually and regarding functionality, with the only noticeable difference being that the verification bubbles are red instead of blue. Red, yeah. Uh, also, as we mentioned before, the, the media hosting services, they're going to be done by Rumble, a conservative YouTube alternative that just offered Joe Rogan $100 million to leave Spotify. Hey, remember when Joe Rogan was the biggest news in the world for two weeks straight and then nothing fucking happened? Oh, yeah. Anyways, Trump himself seems to be the only one that's able to use the app in its current form, sending out a truth last week in anticipation of the app's launch, where he said, get ready, your favorite president will see you soon. Uh, the irony here is that no one would have ever seen it if it hadn't been screenshotted and posted to Twitter by his son, Donald Trump Jr., who added, time for some truth. Dad, I'm helping. Apparently, it's not time for truth, however, uh, and it might not be for at least a few more weeks. And that's according to former Congressman Devin Nunes, who abruptly abandoned his role in the U.S. government in order to take a job at uh, Truth's parent company, the Trump Media and Technology Group. When speaking to Fox News ahead of the app's launch, uh, he said that, quote, 
our goal is, I think we're going to hit it, I think by the end of March, we're going to be fully operational, at least within the United States. And that's despite his appearance on the show revolving around the fact that the launch was on February 21st. Uh, Nunez, of course, has his own vendetta against Twitter. It's a, it's a platform that refuses to ban accounts that portray him as a cow or a cow that mocks him. Yeah. Luckily for him, he has gotten his revenge because it appears as though someone did try to register a Devin Nunez cow account on Truth Social, but was promptly banned from the platform. What about my free speech? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Matt Ortega posted a screenshot of the ban on Twitter with an added message of his own. This is censorship. It is. Mm hmm. So the Truth launch is being seen as a success, though, I guess, at least in terms of attention and downloads. According to Forbes, the app was downloaded 170,000 times during its first day, according to data from Apptopia, a site that tracks the app ecosystem. Although there's no way to know how many people were actually signing up to actually engage and contribute on a new conservative social platform versus just lucky lose who were <laughs> curious about whether or not it was going to be a total shit show and would eventually get bored and wait for Truth best ofs to appear on other platforms like Twitter and Reddit. Yeah, I mean, who's, who's to, to say? say? <laughs> like, like, there's a lot of me and uh, people that we know yeah. uh, that are just signing up for it to sit back and eat the popcorn. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, like, I remember when, uh, what was the most recent one? Getter? When that launched, it was just, there. Were, uh, my whole timeline was people making Getter accounts to just, like, troll and put, like, pictures of old men in their underwear and shit. Well, yeah, and then you had Parlor, which... Uh, <laughs> has been shown to have just been a wonderful gift handed directly to the CIA and FBI. So it's like, I mean, those were active though. I mean, we'd like to say that it's maybe 50-50 on the signups, but if you look at the success of something like Parler, you have to face the reality that there are a lot of very angry weirdos out there who are looking for a place to thrive after their accounts have been banned or suspended on mainstream sites like Facebook and Twitter. Yeah, but where's the fun in it? <laughs> if you can't get, other, get mad at other people and uh, make them mad at you. Wasn't that a, a problem initially with Parler with uh, some uh, provocateurs yeah. who were like, this isn't fun? Like, yeah. it was like Milo Yiannopoulos was like, oh, well, it's not fun being on there because everyone just agrees with me. It's because these people, not all of them, but a lot of them, their politics entirely revolves around owning the libs. So when you remove the ability to own the libs from the equation, it's like, well, this fucking sucks. Yeah, I'm just really reading what Donald yeah. Trump was posting on his news section of his website, except in a what appears to be a Twitter timeline, but isn't. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, this is all without mentioning that this app is going to be a nightmare for moderation, because like we said, a lot of the people who need an app like this are people who have been banned from other platforms for things like hate speech and spreading misinformation and whatnot. It, it really seems like this is either going to be a nightmare for conservatives, because it will be an easy reference, uh, easy to reference example of what their base actually consists of, and yeah. on that end would make it an easy FBI target like Parler turned out to be. Or nearly all actual speech will be restricted on the app, and it will mainly serve as a newsletter for Donald Trump and his supporters in government. Just an echo chamber for the Trump party and an intricate, easy-to-use mailing list for his 2024 campaign, which is definitely 100% happening. Yeah, I was convinced. I, I, st I still am like wondering if it'll happen where Donald Trump will attempt to negotiate with Putin behind the scenes and strike some kind of like deal in order to make Joe Biden look bad? I mean, Reagan kind of did that uh, while Carter was still president. So that's what I'm, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. Like if, if this is something, if, because Putin knows that that would yeah. like d even further destabilize trust in the government of which there is next uh, to nothing now. I, yeah. I think, I'm not trying to give him any ideas, but I could definitely see that happening and happening on Truth Social with an agreement that's backed by the blockchain. Yeah. Because at this point, anything that we spitball that might happen seems to come true because reality is stranger than anything else that's happening in fiction. You gotta be careful with that spitballing. I know. It lands on the target way too often. <laughs> it's spitballing. It's just supposed to go to the ceiling, the floor, someone's back in someone's head. Donald it, Trump is it, operating bullseye. as a- Bullseye. He, he wasn't lying when he said he was gonna operate as like a proxy president down at Mar-a-Lago. Yeah. It's going to come out. He's going to be like, yeah. so I spoke with Putin on the phone and uh, we made a little bit of a deal. I think everyone's going to be really happy. Uh, they're going to be pulling back their troops and uh, Joe Biden looks bad. Also, gas prices, they're going to, Putin's going to let the gas flow. He knows he's very gassy. Uh, yeah. So. I, I am curious to see his takes on the current situation because I think it'll be hard for him to really 
take much of a stance either way, other than just criticizing. Oh no! If the you way... go to his, uh, his most recent news post on his website, which is a social media platform uh-huh. now, anyway, yeah, is that uh, this would have never happened when he was president. He had a good relationship with Putin. Uh, Putin would have never done anything like this uh, while he was in charge because he knows that uh, they had, he would spank their ass. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, enough of that shit. Yeah. What a letdown. Let's get into some goofy Olympic stuff as the games come to a close. Wow. Just flew right by. I know. Didn't and I, it? I'll admit that I did end up watching more Winter Olympics than I thought that I would. And that's mostly because they were uh, on late. And I was staying up uh, late recently to play that Lost Ark game. And it was just nice to have on in the background. But uh, lots of skiing, lots of snowboarding, lots of figure skating. Got to watch all that stuff. Pretty good stuff. Lots of flips and spins. Yeah, I I watched about five minutes of it at a restaurant because it was on a TV. And other than that, I've seen uh, seen a few clips, a lot of funny clips. A lot of uh, it's funny. The same month the Jackass comes out, and it's just <laughs> a lot of dick torture. Uh, it seems to be seems to also be happening over in Beijing. Yeah. Uh, Well, we have two stories out of the Olympics this week that are pretty outrageous, starting with a figure skating duo that is now getting sued by the artists who created the music that was used in their performance on the world stage. Uh, This seems like it could be a straightforward copyright infringement case, but it's a bit odd. Does the synchronized performance aspect of the ice skaters make this transformative? Does it lessen the burden because the song is a cover song anyway, and it's a cover song that is nearly 100 years old? And it's one of the most covered songs in music history, by God. House of the Rising Sun. Who are they to think they own it? Uh, Well, I'm not sure. I don't know anything about the law. We'll have to wait and see. But here's info on this from People.com. Two U.S. figure skaters alongside NBC have been named in a lawsuit that alleges they used a song during an Olympic routine without the artist's permission. On Thursday, musical duo Heavy Young Heathens filed a suit in the Central District of California's Southern District alleging blatant and purposeful copyright infringement on their version of House of the Rising Sun, which Brandon Fraser and Alexa Miram used during a recent short program performance at the Beijing Winter Games. In the filing, the group says Fraser and Miram chose to use the track, which has been featured in various films, television series, video games, and more for their 2022 Winter Olympics short program without the authorization or permission of the plaintiffs, adding that The defendants recognized plaintiff's popularity, talent, and goodwill and used the song in a brazen and improper effort to capitalize on plaintiff's hard work and copyright ownership of it. So, I mean, yeah, these dudes make music specifically for the entertainment industry. So it sounds like they might know their way around a lawsuit like this. Uh, We'd hope that NBC would ultimately be responsible for not clearing the usage and not the skaters themselves. Because otherwise it would have been a live performance that wasn't televised and broadcast around the world. Yeah, I I mean, that that is, I never thought about that, but yeah, if you're broadcasting this... That's on NBC to get the rights for it. Yeah, I guess, yeah, it is their job to, I mean, you know there's going to be music playing during these performances. Not that I would have or the performers would have liked it, but if this was actually a, a, a serious problem that NBC hadn't faced in all of the other times that this has happened, yeah, uh, you would assume that NBC would be like, hey, here's 500 songs you can choose from, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I've never thought about this, but yeah, are artists getting paid uh, for these Olympic performances? I mean, they Universal, Universal Music Group, they could at least give them some fucking options. That is true. So I hope that uh, if anyone loses money in this case, it's NBC and not the fucking figure skaters who are like, yeah, it's good. It's a house of the rising sun. People love it. Let's do that. Yeah, these rich professional figure skaters with all their money, (laughs) they make figure skating. Yeah, with all their millions. Yeah. And their very long, amazing careers that are always well financed. And and their their great knees that don't have any of the the damage to the cartilage that other athletes have. Just great knees. Yes. Except for that Nancy Kerrigan. Yeah, well... Not so good knees. Someone got a little too attached to those beautiful knees. <laughs> uh, anyways. Yeah, so at the very least, the, the figure skating duo were competing in a more controlled environment and didn't almost freeze their genitals off like the athlete in our next story. Finnish cross-country skier Remy Lindholm's penis was frozen during his competition, heavily impacting his ability to perform and ruining any fun he was going to have inside Olympic Village. Sorry, ladies. It's on ice. You're not going to be needing these condoms. <laughs> so how do you nearly freeze your dick off while competing in a sport that you're supposedly an expert in? 
We have no idea. Seems like something that should have come up. But yeah. <laughs> uh, here's, uh, let's just read from the coverage over at CNN. The men's 50 kilometer mass start race at the Beijing Games was shortened to 30 kilometers, but that did little to help Finland's Remy Lindholm, who needed a heat pack at the end of the race, to thaw out a particularly sensitive body part. Uh-huh. Lindholm spent just under an hour and 16 minutes traversing the course in howling, freezing winds, leading to his penis becoming frozen for the second time <laughs> in a cross-country skiing race following a similar incident in Ruka, Finland last year. Buddy, <laughs> you got to stop letting that penis get frozen. How does that happen twice? <laughs> you would think that he would have learned. You would think he'd be so traumatized Your penis the first clearly time. runs cold, and you yeah. have to take that into account. Like... Is it re- like maybe it would, but is it really going to slow you down significantly enough in a race like this to just add one extra layer of wool? Yeah. Right, just tuck. You can put it under the the skin tight uh, clothing that you have to wear for the less uh, wind resistance, but like you know, just an extra base layer because it already happened once. Yeah, Ugh, that has sucked. Also, I mean, it was really it was unusually cold. That that the reason they, sh- they shortened it is because there was high winds. It was actually snowing, yeah, yeah. which is not supposed to like happen. Yeah, no, this was uh, a, a mistake. Yeah. Um, but it happened twice. That thing must have been shrunk into the size of a peanut. But he could last as long as she wanted to. Yep. <laughs> Ooh, it's cold. You just tell me when to... Do you tell me when you want me to... You tell me when you It'd want me It would be hilarious if he's just like... He's like, there's if I if I leave things the way they are, by the time I make it to the finish line, they're going to have to amputate my frozen penis. So I'm going to do the only thing that I can do. Yeah. I'm gonna start jacking off while uh, <laughs> you keep it warm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this isn't sexual. This isn't for my pleasure. <laughs> this is to survive it's for self-preservation. Otherwise, they're gonna have a drink in Finland where you drink it and the dead penis hits your lips, oh, God. just like in Canada with that toe. <laughs> hey, you want to come do a shot of the lino? Yeah. Sour toes for amateurs. And so, and then someone's gonna steal the penis and they're gonna need a new frozen penis to put in the drink. Ugh. And you're gonna have a shirt like instead of tequila and I drank the worm. I kissed the penis. <laughs> I kissed the dick. Oh, <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, here's a quote from Lindholm himself. You can guess which body part was a little bit frozen when I finished the men's 50 kilometer race. It was one of the worst competitions I've been in. It was just about battling through, he told Finnish media. Lindholm explained that he used a heat pack to try and thaw out his appendage once the race was over. Quote, when the body parts started to warm up after the finish, the pain was unbearable. He got the screaming... Uh, screaming barfies. Screaming barfies on his dick. I was just remembering that when I read about this yeah. because... Holy so shit. When we did that AFK show back at Machinima, yeah. we had to go ice climbing. And we did. it was fucking freezing. It was in like New Hampshire in yeah, like it was, February or March. I think it was like 15 or 20 degrees Fahrenheit. And you're uh, exerting freezing. all this effort. And Your hands are... Uh, I yeah. put my hands down and he's like, don't do that. And, I, and he's like, well, it's too late now. We, we didn't want to tell you about this, but there's a thing called the screaming barfies. Yeah. And when the blood rushes back into your frozen hands. When your hands are up, you're not getting, your blood pressure is not, so when you put your arms down. And they're yeah. freezing. Yeah. Uh, it felt it's like uh, it was getting gnawed on by like 10 pit bulls. Oh my God. It was terrible. Yeah, that, oh my God. Wow. This but, poor fucking bastard. I know. Could you imagine that happening to your dick? Twice. Yeah, the, the second time, you're, you can see it's coming, too. Yeah. You're just like, oh, I know how bad this is going to uh-huh. be. Just ch- just take it off. Uh-huh. So, yeah, this uh, the real reason this guy froze his dick is because, as we said, leading up to the event, it was way too cold for the athletes to compete safely without risking potential frostbite. So, and organizers, they initially delayed the start, and then they just ended up shortening the length of everything overall. And apparently that still wasn't enough. And uh, those competitors were serving up frozen hot dogs for dinner. Sorry, ladies, not tonight. Yeah, that sucks. So They should have given them all a gold medal for what they went through there. They should have had their wives and girlfriends waiting at the finish line so they could warm those penises yeah. right back up. Yeah. Yep. That's just responsible. That's the sacrifice I make as an Olympic wife. Yeah. It's like a military wife. You would dress you me, me by my, my husband's, husband's rank. rank. <laughs> <laughs> Depend upon him. <laughs> Uh, moving on, though, uh, uh, fan voting via online polls is obviously the the worst way for any legitimate brand or production to decide on anything. Yeah. And we'll always be filled with trolls who want the worst possible choice to win or some variation on Bodie McBoatface or whatever. Exactly. But it gets even worse when fandoms get involved because your results are just clearly going to be skewed based on whoever has the most 
technologically active, and sometimes extremely toxic and annoying fan base. So when the Oscars announced that they would be doing an award for top fan-voted film, like it's the fucking Kids' Choice Awards, <laughs> everyone knew it was going to end in disaster. And oh, su- let's get, about, let's get surprise, Spider-Man surprise. Tumbling out here to get, yeah, to get we got, slimed. We got this golden surfboard for you. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, surprise, uh, things have not been going great at all for the fan voting section of the Oscars. <laughs> the very idea of this award is stupid. Clearly motivated by the fact that no one watches the fucking Oscars yeah. anymore because nobody watches the movies featured in the Oscars anymore. They're just doing it to get those ratings back up. Yeah, no one even uh, cares about the Oscars except for the people who worked on the film. Yeah, it's a circle jerk. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so instead of actually acknowledging that widely popular movies can also be good. They're creating what's essentially a fake award chosen by fans. Uh, <laughs> it's like the honorable mention. Yeah. It's a Dundee. I mean, we didn't like it, but these fucking idiots did. <laughs> Imagine, like, look, I'm sure whoever actually wins this will be happy to have an Academy Award on their shelf, but like... Oscar winner asterisk. <laughs> fan voted. You just like cover up the fan award like yeah. engraving on it. Just put some... Some electrical tape on that. <laughs> yeah. So even if people were voting on this in good faith, it's a dumb award. But the reality is that you're never going to get an accurate position on any of these nominees because it's all just going to be done by brigading, which is exactly how it's happening right now. Here's the brief version of uh, what's been going on. Everyone assumed that maybe Spider-Man No Way Home would uh, take home an easy win after its performance at the bo- box office. It was obviously very popular. Yeah. And this is supposed to be a award based on popularity and fandom. But no, instead, the Snyder Bros flooded the Oscar sites with a massive amount of nominations for Zack Snyder's version of the Justice League, but then uh, quickly realized the effort was pointless because the film, um, they made it very clear, not eligible to win. This is bullshit. Because it's technically just like a re-edit of a movie that came out in 2017. So it's it's not Oscars eligible, sorry. So I guess they're going to have to nominate the other Snyder movie that came out last year, uh, the, the zombie one? Yep, the, oh, the no. Academy, they put oh, out a no. list of films that were actually actually eligible. And, oh, no. uh, the Snyder fans, they altered the course, and they have now been flooding the polls with Zack Snyder's zombie movie, Army of the Dead, which was released last year on Netflix. Now, this has caused a war between the top two titles in the voting, uh, the Zack Snyder film and an Amazon Prime, straight-to-prime version of Cinderella. Which doesn't make any sense. It nobody watched it. It has bad reviews. I didn't know there was a Cinderella movie. It's got to be either a troll vo- vote or a, it stars Camilla Cabello. So I don't know if there's a bunch of like cab heads out there. Who's she? It, is she a singer? I don't know. Is this like a? I don't, is it a TikToker? I don't know. I'm too old. Maybe there is a fan base for this person online, like the uh, the BTS stands. Yeah. Um. But maybe that's what it is. I'm leaning towards troll vote because it was like. Probably you look at the list of eligible movies and you're like, what the hell? All right. Yeah, let's put this up there. That'll be funny if this wins. Um, A third contender, which is uh, just behind those two movies, is a movie called Minimata, which stars Johnny Depp. Oh, my God. Wow, they got all the freaks in here. Holy (laughs) shit. It's surging because of the controversy surrounding the lawsuit between him, Amber Heard, and various uh, news outlets. Essentially, the Oscars brought together all of the worst parts of film Twitter to compete against each other to crown a winner that has to be recognized on the film industry's biggest night and most illustrious awards show. It's either the dumbest thing I've ever seen or actually fucking brilliant. This is actually art. Yeah, Uh, I don't think they'll be doing this again next year. And they might not even do it this year. We'd like to bring uh, Camilla Cabello up to receive her Oscar for her portrayal of Cinderella yeah. in the Amazon Prime original, Cinderella. I'd like to thank the freaks on the internet. <laughs> we'd like to thank... We'd, I'd like, like to, to thank bring, 4chan. We'd like to bring Johnny Depp on stage to receive his Oscar for uh, this new movie. Well, Did you know she shit in my bed? <laughs> she shit in my bed and the entire internet knows about it. She and they love me for shit. it. Love me. Anyway, God, uh, let's end today's episode with a. Uh, I love this so much. <laughs> a, a big bad bear story for you. Meet Hank the Tank, an extremely obese looking black bear that has been causing chaos in Lake Tahoe as he roams the landscape in search of leftover beer and pizza and breaking into more than two dozen homes in the process. <laughs> uh, you get between Hank and his pizza. You better watch out. You better watch out. He might sit on you. So Hank's antics have continued unabated as local officials and the public are apparently unable to stop him. And why should they? This is all their fault anyway. Exactly. 
Uh, regardless, here's the, the New York Times with more on Hank the Tank. So far, nobody has been able to deter Hank, said Peter Tira, a spokesman for the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. Department officials and the local police have tried to haze the bear with paintballs, beanbags, sirens, and tasers, but he's too drawn to humans and their food to stay away for long. Quote, it's easier to find leftover pizza than to go in the forest, Mr. Tira said on Sunday. Residents have called the police about Hank more than 100 times since July as he continues to rampage through Tahoe Keys, a gated community about 190 miles northeast of San Francisco. That's like every two days. Uh, Hank is is uh, doing something upsetting enough that people call the cops. Well, you can't miss him. He's gigantic. Yeah. And uh, this time he's probably just motivated by spite. They keep shooting those paintballs at me. Yeah, what the fuck? Paintballs? You got my... Fur all sticky and shit. I, they're probably those pepper balls that they yeah. use in riot, uh, riot cops. Whatever it is, it's mean and they should stop. Yeah, uh, this is like those capybaras. Like, you live in bear country. This is going to happen. This is their home. It, 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 look, I haven't been up there, but like when you go to like Big Bear and you have to lock all of the... People yeah. have to lock their trash cans and shit because of this. Yeah. They have to bear proof everything. So I don't understand what... There's a lot of reasoning that went into this. Uh, the most logical, I guess logical, uh, excuse that I saw in the reporting is that it's because of the pandemic. And pre-pandemic, everyone that was visiting kind of knew how to treat things, how to respect nature. Yeah. And then you get all these people who have been stir crazy and just want to, and they can't visit anywhere else. So they're like, during the pandemic, you couldn't even visit fucking like Disney World and shit. So they're all going to the uh, the real world. Like Lake Tahoe and just fucking throwing their pizza boxes everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Guys, it's uh, rule number one of bear country. Don't uh, feed the bears. Yeah. We need a new Yogi Bear to teach people that. Only you can prevent bears from fucking up your shit. Hank is literally stealing picnic baskets. <laughs> Good for him. Uh, they're uh, reporting it continues, but uh, takes a dark but not unsurprising turn. Now the authorities are trying to trap Hank and possibly euthanize him. What? Oh, come on. <laughs> This is a bear that has lost all fear of people, Mr. Tira said. It's a potentially dangerous situation. Hank, so named by the local residents, has used his size and strength to barge through garages, windows, and doors. <laughs> Hell yeah. As of Thursday, Hank had broken into at least 28 <laughs> homes. At 500 pounds, Hank is, quote, exceptionally large, the state wildlife authorities said. The average black bear in the western United States weighs 100 to 300 pounds. But Hank's diet of human food and garbage has expanded his size, said Ann Bryant, the executive director of the Bear League, a wildlife rescue service in Homewood, California. He didn't get fat like that eating berries and grubs, she said, adding that it was not clear how Hank developed a taste for human food. So, does he not have to hibernate at some point? Um, there was one article that I read it that went in on that and basically the big like surge of these attacks or rummages or whatever uh, happened around the time where he would be bulking yeah for that so like he was trying to find easy amounts of like food yeah they're trying to bulk up as much as possible yeah although he's clearly he's he's past the point where he needs, he needs to hibernate a long time yeah uh Hank I think you've had enough yeah. But um, don't kill him. I, when I was, a, I mean, if you go to Yosemite, especially if you stay in the, the Curry Village area, which is like a bunch of cabins close together, you see bears every couple of days. They, there's always some bears that they, they get a little too comfortable. They're, they're like, well, there's all these, all these people with all these food there. So when I was a kid, there was one year where a bear just kept breaking into people's cabins. So the rangers, they finally, they found him, they tranquilized him. They let, a, they let all of us pet the bear while it was conked out, which was cool. Get a picture with the bear. This has this bear just on a stretcher. And like, hey, you kids want to pet the bear? Fucking hand this big. Uh, very soft, though. Yeah. And they're like, well, what are you going to do with it? And they're like, oh, we're just going to airlift him like 100 miles away from here. So why don't they just do that? Just shoot Hank with a tranquilizer. And, they tried. Uh, He's too big. I think he got up the dosage. Yeah. A big, huge tranquilizer dart. Yeah. Yeah. Comically large for a comically large bear. Just uh, put a little bit of that fentanyl in there. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Only need a little bit. Yeah. Uh, enough to kill a person, but enough to just make a bear a little bit look groggy. I like how she was like, we have no idea how you developed a taste for human food. They talk about you eating Because you left pizza. all your trash pizza out and shit. Pizza's delicious. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah. So anyway, it looks like uh, the locals, despite Hank's ability to destroy them in their homes easily, without even thinking about it, with his giant claws <laughs> and sharp, razor-sharp teeth, uh... 
People do not want to see him killed. That's good. That's good. Uh, yeah, because this is, it is all their fault. Yeah. This would not be fair to Hank to shoot him for just doing what bears do. Yeah. Quote, even though the neighbors do not want Hank to vandalize their homes, they want him to be treated with respect, Ms. Bryan said. The residents are quick to point out that Hank is gentle and sweet. When he breaks into a home, he is far more interested in the food than any people who may be inside, Ms. Bryan said. He just sits there and eats, she said. He doesn't attack them. He doesn't growl. He doesn't make rude faces. <laughs> He's better than He's your in-laws. He's a very polite bear. <laughs> this bear is is better than having the in-laws over because they're not even going to fight over the dinner table. Oh, Hank, you can come over anytime. I love Hank because he doesn't talk politics. My own grandkids, table. they won't come get some of grandma's cooking, but Hank, he shows up every time. We love Hank. We, we leave the door open for Hank. <laughs> he, he might be a little messy, <laughs> but he's our Hank. And he doesn't bring up the vaccine. No, he doesn't. <laughs> He believes in personal freedom. <laughs> yeah. Though other homeowners have reported that Hank has caused extensive property damage, he has not harmed any humans, the authority said. Why should this big dummy die, Ms. Bryant said. <laughs> and I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Lock up your shit. Stop, stop putting food trash in a trash can that is accessible to bears. You have to make some sacrifices well, living in the fucking mountains. So that's the problem. That's where it started. Where it ended is a 500, a bear that is three times the size of a normal black bear who can literally run through your garage door and yeah. get into that freezer where you're keeping all that deer meat that you've got. There's this uh, fucking Reddit video on like r slash unexpected that I always go back to. And it's just like, it's like a, just a security camera inside of a house, like aiming at the door. And like the door just like flies off his hinges. It just like, bah! and then there's like, like a, an action movie. Perfect comedic pause. Like what the hell did that? And then this bear just walks in like, it, it blows off like a Michael yeah. Bay movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like it's it like smacks into the wall. Hey, what's up? What's going on? I think the bear even like holds out its hand to like stop the door from smashing back <laughs> and closing because he hit it so fucking hard. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. But yeah, that is true. It's like it, it started with leaving some shit out and it ended with him. <laughs> like when you hear Hank knocking, you just have to like lock yourself in the room and be Hank, like, just right. take whatever you want. Please leave us alone. Hey, y'all hear they lifted the mandate? <laughs> All right. See you next Tuesday. Y'all see any picnic baskets around here? <laughs> Ooh, pizza. <laughs> My favorite. Hank, anyway. you guys, uh, I, think, I think the Hank problem might sort itself out when uh, his cholesterol gets so high. <laughs> that that bear's, he, he has a heart attack. That bear is going to die of natural... <laughs> <problems>. <laughs> That no one, he's not got, even humans, should be eating human. He's food. gonna get bear gout. <laughs> They're gonna have to get him one of those little scooters. He's gonna be like the bear in the Shriners. Yeah. He's gonna drive a little car. Hey. You got any pizzas? Hank just uh, performs in parades now. Come on, you didn't all eat all your crusts. Hey, Hank's retired. <laughs> Don't ask Hank to do a damn thing. Why don't thing. you leave the door open for Hank? Hank doesn't want to break down the door anymore. <laughs> uh, anyways, leave Hank the fuck alone. Yeah, Hank the tank. Um, nature will, sadly, because of his interaction with humans, take its course. It will. So, anyways, uh, if you haven't already seen it, uh, we have a recent episode of Weekly Weird News over here, and we have a news dump episode about uh, the Walt Disney, the Walt Disney Company buying up a bunch of land out in the desert and saying, now you deal with it, Yeah, fans. Disney adults, <laughs> go right ahead. Secretly, it's a really good idea. They just yeah. throw them all out in the desert. Disney adult quarantine. Mm -hmm. Those little mini ears, they better have water in them, like a camelback. Yeah. Anyways, watch both of those videos, subscribe to the channel, and uh, this episode isn't sponsored, so become a member by clicking the join button today.